Jason Zell. That's me. I wrote a blog, started a blog back in 2014, and I didn't really know what I was thinking about other than I wanted to write about front-end development. Today, I help over 40,000 developers a month with their front-end related questions. I never thought that my small little blog would be able to help so many people, so writing this blog and helping people is an honor for me. I also didn't think that I would be able to write books or courses, but I did so anyway. In 2015, I launched my first book that's called Learning Susie. In 2016, I launched my second book, Automating a Workflow. In 2017, my first course, Mastering Responsive Typography. And just two weeks ago, I launched the latest one, Learn JavaScript, in 2018. I never would have gotten so far without writing. Writing has taught me a lot about communication, about talking to people, about creating relationships, and even about selling the things that I make. And today, I'd like to share with you three things that I've learned through the process of writing. I believe that these three things are important for all of us. So three lessons. Here's the first one. Silence the inner critic. We all have a critic at the back of our heads. It's the voice that tells us not to write the blog post that we wanted to write. It's the voice that tells us not to contribute to open source because we are not good enough. It is the voice that tells you not to ask your boss for a raise because you're going to get fired instead of getting the raise that you want. It is the voice that tells me not to stand on stage today to share with you about writing because I'm going to embarrass myself in front of 400 people. This voice goes by many names. Stephen Pressfield calls it the resistance. Seth Godin calls it the lizard brain. Some of us will know it as the imposter syndrome. I'm just going to call it the critic today. The thing about the critic is, whenever you want to do something important, it will be there to stop you. It will say nasty things in your face. It will try to make you lose confidence, and you will probably lose confidence along the way. It will. And the sucky part about this all is that the more important something is to you, the more you care about the results that you want to make, the louder the critic gets. Many people think that the critic will go away when you become more experienced. Unfortunately, it doesn't. The critic gets louder as you become more experienced because you're playing at bigger stakes. Sarah Swedan, who is a front-end developer that I respect a lot, still hears the critic. And I'm sure that the speakers that have gone before me have experienced the critic, and the speakers that will go after me will also experience the critic as well. So to overcome the critic, you want to consider a question. What is more important? Is what you are doing more important, or is the critic more important? If you, what you are doing is more important than the critic, are you willing to put it above the critic? If you are, then start doing the work. Start talking to people, start designing, start making the thing that you want to make, no matter whether it's for profit or for fun. It doesn't matter. Just start doing it. Do it over and over and over again, and you'll learn to tell the critic that, hey, it is okay. Leave it to me. Trust me to handle things. And if it all goes to shit, the world probably wouldn't end. I will probably be able to handle things, and it's fine. We'll leave to see another day. So do the work. Do it because it's important to you, and do it because it's important to all of us. Second lesson is about them. There are many ways to take in this lesson, so here's a few. Here's the first way. The work that you put into whatever you want to do is about them, not you, not anyone else. If you want a raise from your boss, then you kind of have to think about your boss. It's not about you anymore. 
If you want better relationships with your family members, it's about your family members, not about you. If you want to write a blog post and you want it to be good, you think about the readers who are reading your blog post, not about you, not about anyone else. If you put the focus on the work, on them, you release the focus on yourself. And when you release the focus on yourself, your critic weakens. Yes, the critic will still tell you that you are lousy and what, sh what shitty situation I got myself into, like what am I doing over here? And it will tell you how unfair the world is, but it doesn't matter anymore. Because what's important is about them, it's about the people you're trying to help, it's about the people who will read your work, not anyone else. So let's say you put the critic aside and you manage to put out some work. What's the most scary thing that's going to happen? For a lot of us, the most scary thing that's going to happen is that people will ignore you. And that is going to happen. Nobody will see your work. Nobody will notice your existence. And that is going to happen. And here's the second way to think about this lesson. Because people are busy with their lives. People don't care about you. They don't care about your work. They don't care about what you do. All they care about is themselves and the things they want to care about. So just think about it this way. You don't care about the person who is sitting two seats away in front of you in this conference, don't you? Not unless you know them personally. So don't worry about what others think of your work and don't worry if others don't pay attention to what you are trying to say. Because if you focus on helping them, if you focus on them, sooner or later, they will notice you. And when they do notice you, some of them will thank you for the work that you do. Some of them will encourage you to write more, to do more. And some of them will shit on you. And that comes to the third lesson. You've heard the phrase, haters gonna hate. If they hate your work, that is fine, because it's not about you, it's about them. What they're doing is, underneath the hood, if you think about it, think about a person you hate or you dislike. Why do you dislike this person, or why do you hate this person? If you dive deep into the question, you're gonna come with an answer that feels somewhat similar to this. I hate or dislike this person, because of a personal experience that I had about this situation. So that is what haters are essentially doing. They are not hating your work. They are not hating you. They are hating an experience that they had about someone else or about themselves. So don't let your critic smash you for something that is not your fault. Don't let your critic smash you for a problem that belongs to someone else. Go in and put in the work, because it is important for all of us. Now, I, at this point, I have to say that sometimes reasonable people say hurtful things too. In 2015, I wrote my first guest post for Smashing Magazine, and you guys probably know what Smashing Mag is. If not, you wouldn't be here, so I would, shouldn't explain. In 2015, I wrote my first post. I put in everything I got to make it the best post that I've ever written so far. The, mo the morning the, the guest post got released, I checked my Twitter feed and I saw this. I felt confused and bizarre that this article was published in a prestigious website like Smashing Magazine. And mind you, this isn't from a hater. This was from an expert that I respected. It hurts. It took me a while to get over it emotionally, and you can see that it's still hurting me right now. But bear in mind that whatever the expert said about you is his or her opinion as well. Whatever the expert said doesn't mean that your work is shit, it doesn't mean that your work is not valid, because if you focus on the people you're trying to help, 
and the people get it, then it's all worth it. I know that article was good because people came back and thanked me for it. So remember, it's all about them. Not about you, not about the experts, not anyone else. And with that, let me come to my third lesson, and that is be human. As humans, we have a gift. We have the ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. We can empathize with people, but we don't use it. Many of us don't. I'm pretty sure the expert who wrote the tweet didn't care about my feelings as someone who was trying to contribute back to the community. I'm pretty sure he didn't. He or she didn't. I can't forget it's a he or she. But why, why don't we empathize with people more? One reason may be because we are so absorbed in our own worlds that we completely forgot that anyone else exists. And we don't care about them at all. And that is just sad. Another reason might be because we are brought up that way. We are brought up to treat people how you want others to treat you. And to us, that is respect. But there's a fatal flaw in this statement because it assumes that you and I are the same. It assumes that you and I like the same things. That, but I am not you, and you are not me. We like and dislike different things. I don't want to be treated like you. I want to be treated like me. And that applies to all of us in this room and everyone else in the world. So instead of treating people how you want them to treat you, I say you treat them how they need you to treat them. Need, not want, because sometimes you need to treat people harshly for their own sake. For example, if your kids are naughty, sometimes you have to scold them. You won't like that, they won't like that, but you need to do it for their sake. But how do you treat people? How do, how do you know how to treat people and how, whether do they need them or not? And for that, you need to put yourself in their shoes. You need to figure out what they are feeling before you can find out. But empathy is difficult. It is tempting to say, come into the room and say that I know, oh, it's, it's tempting to come into the room and say that I know exactly what you are feeling. So that's why you should do this and follow my instructions. That is bullshit, my friend. That is bullshit. Because there is no way that you will know how I'm feeling because you are not me and you have not gone through my experiences so you don't know the magnitude of my fears, of my anxieties, of my worries, and of my pain. There is no way. But if you are willing to, you can come close. And if you are being real about it, you can make a connection in that moment. And when you make a connection in that moment, that is when we open up. People open up. We open up because we know you understand us and we know you care. And we trust you. We trust your words. This is the golden moment where everything matters. Because what you say, even though if you don't know it, what you say will stay in their hearts for a long, long time to come. And if they don't act on what you say, if they don't act on your advice, that is fine. Because what's next is up to them. You have done your work. What's next is about them. And with that, I would like to wrap up the talk for today. I believe that these three lessons, silence the critic, it's about them, not you, and being human, are three lessons that are very important for all of us over here. Why? Let's imagine for a moment. If all of us in this room, and I mean just all of us in this room only, not anyone else who is outside watching the stream, not anyone else who is at home, reading, uh, watching the live stream, if all of us in this room 
follow these three lessons. If we all put aside our critics, if we all focus on the people we want to help, and if we encourage and help each other and understand each other and the people we want to help, what can we build in 10 years? What kind of world will we live in in 10 years? Now imagine if everyone in the world does the same. Thank you.